Hello everyone, welcome in the fourth part of my course Microservices on Kubernetes. Today we'll talk about best practices for building microservices architecture. Track. In the first three parts of my tutorial, I focused on showing you tools that helps you in development and also speeds up your deployment on Kubernetes. Today we'll proceed to the coding. I'm going to show you an example of source code written in Kotlin of application that follows some, some selected best practices for running such applications like microservices on Kubernetes. Let's start from logging. I know from my experience that logging is not the most important thing during development. And we usually don't care much about such things like, for example, standardization in the logs format. But it becomes very important during maintenance, especially if we have plenty of applications running on our cluster. And that's why I'm providing very trivial implementation of a custom filter responsible for logging all incoming requests and outgoing responses. It's also generating unique request ID, which is set as MDC field, and then it is the same for all the logs within the same thread. If we would like to send such custom fields like that request ID to the tool responsible for log collection, we need to provide a format of logs readable by FluentD. That's why I'm including library log slash logback encoder and then setting logback encoder as a default formatter for console appender inside logback XML. The next important thing is for maintenance is to expose some valuable metrics that describe a status of our application. Since we are using Spring Boot Actuator, it is able to automatically generate many interesting statistics. We just need to provide integration with the tool responsible for collecting them. On Kubernetes, it is usually Prometheus, so I'm including library micrometer registry Prometheus. And in the next step, we just need to configure Prometheus to be able to collect metrics exposed by our application in Actuator Prometheus endpoint. Prometheus, if your application is integrating with third-party systems like database or message broker, you should take care of setting connection timeouts properly. It is also important to inject all required variables like connection credentials or database name as a reference to the existing config map or secret. You should only remember that if you are rolling back the version of application, it does not roll back the config map or secret. So if you have such properties that are strictly related with the version of your application, you should place them inside your application jar file and just reference via environment variables. As you probably know, Kubernetes provides built-in mechanisms for health checks. It is based on liveness and readiness probes. Liveness probes is responsible for checking if our application is running, while readiness is responsible for checking if it is able to perform incoming requests. So it is important to provide both these uh, implementations in our deployment definition. We can, based on uh, implementation of uh, liveness and readiness endpoints provided by Spring Boot since version 2.3. And the next important thing is to provide an initialization of database during application started. We may use a liquid-based plugin for it. It's only one of the possible options. And you see that um, in the simple configuration file, I'm creating a table person, which is then used by my application. Okay, so we have everything ready here. We can start our application. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you see the logs uh, from liveness probe. You see that Kubernetes is trying to call this endpoint. Uh, after startup, it is periodically trying to call liveness and readiness probes. Each of these calls is finished with 200 uh, HTTP calls, so everything is working fine. You see that uh, our log is formatted as a JSON readable by FluentD. Uh, it also includes a custom field X request ID, so it works following to 
our assumptions. We can now switch to the actuator and uh, the most interesting endpoints for us are Prometheus, you see here. Uh, it um, exposes some interesting metrics from our Java application. We can also take a look on health check endpoint. It's a very important situa interesting situation. You see that this, its status is down while readiness and uh, liveness status are up. Okay, so my application is integrating with Postgres and RabbitMQ, but currently I don't have uh, running instances of uh, these solutions. And it is significantly that application is starting. It is not killed by the Kubernetes. So my application can work without connection to these tools. We can, of course, uh, change uh, the readiness health check uh, and provide an implementation of health. In that case, I will also change the timeout uh, from one second into five seconds. It's, it is important because it's trying to connect with uh, database and, and MongoDB. And you see that currently a readiness probe has been failed, so our application is not active. And the last thing uh, in this part of tutorial, I show you how to enable some add-ons on Minikube. That's the one thing I really like in Minikube, uh, an ability to enable some interesting add-ons very easily by using a single command. And uh, the same uh, uh, is uh, with uh, EFK stack, what means an Elasticsearch uh, Fluent D and Kibana is possible for collecting the logs. We can enable it using a single command. We can also enable, for example, log viewer application. It's very useful. Uh, I don't want to show exactly how to how to use Kibana because I think uh, it's, it's a very easy thing. You can easily run my application on a Minikube and uh, verify in Kibana that um, it is collecting the logs in a proper format. So you can just take a look at what pods has been started and what services has been uh, created for this stack.